Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this letterhead in Word. So if we just open a new document, and the first thing we need to do is to insert our graphics. And if we just go onto the internet here, so we're now on this website called pixabay.com, and all the images here are free. You don't have to sign up. You can just simply download them. So I'm going to go along to the search bar here and just type in water color paint strokes. There's a huge variety that you can choose from. You don't have to choose the one that I am, but I'm going to select this one here. If you click on it and then just click on the free download, you select what you want and just simply click download. Now I've already downloaded mine. So now I'm going to go to insert picture, click on the drop down and select picture from file. Then in my downloads file, I'm going to go to the top picture here that I've just downloaded and click insert. Now to ensure we can just move this image around, I'm going to select it, right click, go down to wrap text and just select in front of text. And that means I can now move this around anywhere in my document. Now I'm just going to reduce it in size and I'm going to make a copy of it. Command or Control C, Command or Control V. There we are. And then all I'm going to do is just to increase the size of this one. Now because I don't want all of these paint strokes, I just want one of them. So I'm going to select this one here. Then I just need to crop this image. So select it, go to Picture Format, along to Crop and just click. Then you can see we've got these black markers around the outside. And all I'm going to do is just move the black markers over so that all we have highlighted is just that pink paint stroke. Just there. And you can see the rest of the image has gone black and white, which means you haven't selected that element. Once you're finished, just press enter. And now you can just play around with this, make it bigger or smaller. You can rotate it using the circular arrow. And then what we need to do is actually duplicate it. So again, make sure it's selected. Command or Control C, Command or Control V. And for this one at the bottom, if we go back to the original design, you can see the one at the bottom has been turned round. So if you just go back, I'm just going to turn that one round, pop that one at the bottom, and just increase the height, increase the size. There we go. You can play around with this as much as you want, so it doesn't have to fit perfectly to begin with. Now, in fact, what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to put a shadow on this, I'm going to delete this one and then copy and paste this one when I finish putting on a shadow just below it. So click on the image here, go to picture format, go along to format pane. Now in this format pane dialog box, you can see we've got a number of different options here and across the top. And I'm going to continue on this icon here, the effects icon, and we're going to click and go down to shadows. Let's just move my window in a bit. And then I'm going to go down to presets and I'm going to put shadow on it. You can pick any of these shadows, it doesn't matter which one, but I think I'm going to select this one here. And then I'm going to just play around with these sliders. Again, you can do this to fully customize yours the way you want it. So the distance slider here will just move that shadow further away from the original image. And then the blur here will just make that a little bit more blurry. Again, it's personal taste. I think this will probably do transparency again. You can make it very transparent. Sorry, you can make it really obvious or a little bit less obvious. I think that would be fine. Okay, now I'm gonna copy and paste this. You can use Command or Control C and V again if you want to, but if you hit your Alt key, once you've selected the image, hit the Alt key, you can see the cursor changes. You can then just click and drag and it will actually duplicate that for you. And then I'm just going to click away and click back on this one because you could see those two were selected. And I only want to adjust this one. I'm going to turn this one around. 
and then just move this to the top. So you see now we've duplicated it, we've also duplicated that shadow which means we don't have to repeat it again. Now I'm going to select this gold one at the top here, I think it was this one I selected so let's just make that a little bit bigger. And then again once you've selected it go to the picture format tab across here and then go to crop and once again just click on those black markers and drag the box around the element that you want to select. There we go and press enter and once again we can play around with these as much as we like. Now if you find that this gold one is in front of this pink one so if I select it, go to picture format and you've got these icons here, bring forwards and send backwards and all that will do is bring a picture forwards or a shape forwards and backwards. So if I click bring forwards and click on it again, you can see it's in front of the pink one. If you need it to go back, click send backwards and it will go behind. Now because you've got another shape here, it sort of deals with them in layers. We created this one first, so this is number one, number two, number three. And once again, we can duplicate this top one with the Alt key, click and drag. Just move that back up. And then this one can go, you see now this one's on top of that pink, we want it to go behind. So select it, make sure you're on picture format. And go to send backwards and just keep clicking until it goes behind that pink one. I'm just going to rotate that slightly. Now as you can see it's fairly simple to get this design up and you can play around with it as much as you like. Now some of the problems that you'll have with this is that unless you copy and paste this whole design onto page number two, page number three depending on how many pages you want, it can get a little bit time consuming. So if you want this so that it's a template so that you can use it on every page and it will appear on every page, you have to put this design into the headers and footers. Now don't worry, it's a really simple process. You just pull your design down and all you're going to do, select this one, press Command or Control C, which is copy, double click at the top of your page and you go into the headers. Once you're in the headers, click Command or Control V. And you can see now we're in the header Everything else has gone opaque and because we're in the headers and footers we've now got this design but it's in the headers and footers. So if you're aware of headers and footers anything you put inside them will appear on every page of your document. Click on the next piece of graphic, copy it, command and control C, double click at the top of your page to go back into the headers and footers, command and control V to paste it and there you have that design there. Go back, double click into the main document, select this graphic here, copy it, Command or Control C, click at the bottom, it doesn't matter if you click at the top or the bottom, you go back into the headers and footers either way, and then Command or Control V to paste it, and then back into the main document, double click, click on this one here, Command or Control C to copy, double click at the bottom, Command or Control V, and then you can see that graphic is there. So double click inside the main document, and then you can either have designed it straight into the headers and footers from the off, or you can do it this way, it doesn't matter. So we can now get rid of all of these, just click on them and delete. Now, some of the things that people have mentioned is that once it's in the headers and footers, then obviously it goes opaque. But once you print it or you send it as a PDF file, I'll show you that at the end, then it will look perfect. The other problem is that you've got your cursor up here, which means if you begin to type, then obviously you type over the design. You can obviously use your cursor and move it down, but often I use text boxes to infill the text here, and I'll come back to that in a minute. All I'm going to do now is just to insert my logo and some information here. 
So again, I'm going to double click back up into the headers and footers. I'm going to go back to my original design. I'm just going to click this design here. This will be my logo. You'll have your own logo. It's going to copy it. And then I'm just going to paste and then bring that down. Okay, so now we want to create all of these elements here. So the way I do that is to go to insert text box, draw text box, just going to click and drag. I'm just going to type my email address, so email at email.com. I'm just going to center that, so go to home, go to the center icon here, and then once I've selected this text box, I'm going to go to shape format. I'm going to get rid of this white background, so go to shape fill and select no fill. And then I'm going to select the shape outline and select no outline because there will be a black border on this text box. And then I'm just going to select that text, go to the home tab. I'm just going to go to the font color icon and select white. I'm also going to change the font to match my logo. So I'm going to go up to the font and down to this Apple Chancery one here. And as you can see, let me just zoom in. If I just click away, you can see the white is very, very obvious. So all I'm going to do, like this design here, I'm just going to turn down the opacity of this white. So that means I'm going to make it a little bit more transparent. So I'm going to double click inside my text box to highlight my text. I'm going to select Command or Control A to select all of the text. Then I'm going to go over to our customization menus. So if you can't find it, go to shape format, make sure you've selected your text box and go to format pane. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to text options, then to text fill, and then I'm going to go down to transparency and I'm just going to move the slider to the right until I'm happy. If you just click away, you can see it's just taken down that white a little bit more and blended in well with the background. Now, once I've created one of these text boxes with the information in, all I need to do now is just simply copy and paste it. And you can do that one of three ways. Obviously, you can use the copy and paste in the Home tab, Command or Control C, Command or Control V, or you can just hit your Alt key, click and drag. So I'm going to make three of these text boxes because I need three pieces of information. So in here, double click, Command or Control A, I was going to put a telephone number. In this one, I'm going to put the website, double click inside, Command or Control A to highlight it all. And then once I've done that, I need to move all these boxes so they're perfectly line up. And the way to do that is to roughly get them where you want them, sort of distance between each one. Then select them all by holding down your command or control key on your keyboard and just click on each piece of text. Make sure you're on shape format. Go along to align, click on the drop down, go down and select distribute vertically. That will mean there's an equal space between each piece of text. Then go to Align and select Align to Center. It will mean that they're all lined up to the central boxes. Now, if you want them to be together so they're grouped, keep them selected. Go to Group and select Group. And then you can move them all around as one, which is really handy. So just zoom out. And then I'm just going to move that down a little bit. Just select it. I'm just going to use my arrow keys to put it where I want. Perfect. Now again, in the main body of the text, all of this is now in the headers and footers. If I double click into the main letter, you can see that's greyed out, but that's fine. As I say, I'll show you at the end when it comes out into a PDF. I'm now going to use text boxes because I feel they're really, really versatile. So I'm going to go to insert, text box, draw text box. 
then I'm just going to click and drag. Now once again this text box has got a white background and a black border so I want to get rid of both of those so again select it, go to shape format, go to shape fill and select no fill, select the outline and select no outline so when I click away you can see it's completely gone. I'm just going to put some text inside here by copying and pasting from the original document so double click inside, select it all, copy it, command or control C, double click inside so my cursor is there, command or control V to then paste it. Now once again now I've completed this text box I've got the font I want inside, it's all perfectly formatted rather than doing it all over again for the different addresses all I need to do again is copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy that, click up, you can see they're both selected so if I do this to one it's going to do it to both. So just click off, click on this one and just reduce it down slightly. Double click inside, command or control A, delete Okay, so now I'm just going to reduce the size of this. I'm also going to change the Your Sincerely element to plain and not bold. Click on the bold tab here. And again, once we've done that, we just move it. It doesn't have to be accurate now. We can line all this up at the end. I'll show you how to do that. Again, I'm going to hold my Alt key down and click and drag up here. And then once again, click and drag over here. So I'm just going to get rid of this text and again get rid of this text. Now you'll obviously put your own text in these boxes but I'm going to copy and paste from here. So double click inside, Command or Control A to highlight it all, Command or Control C to copy and then double click inside this text box, Command or Control V to paste and then back and again click inside, copy it, double click inside this one, paste, perfect. Now you can move these text boxes anywhere if you find that you've typed inside and you try to move it it won't move you have to actually move your cursor to the edge of these text boxes to make the double headed or the cross arrow and then they can be moved around. Then all you need to do is just to move these to exactly where you want to. If you want this perfectly lined up into the middle, just click on it. Again, go to Shape Format. Click on the drop down and select Align to Center. And then it will align that perfectly into the center of your document. Then all you need to do is just select the boxes. You go up here and I just want them all to line up perfectly here. So again, I'm going to go up to Align, click on the drop down and select Align to Left. And I know then they're all lined up perfectly. If I want this one lined up with the edge of my box here, just select it. Make sure it's not over this way because if you select this box as well, what will happen, it will move this box over to the right. So make sure it's within the left hand side of this margin here just select them both, go back up to align and select align to right and it will move that one over to the right. Then if you zoom out you can get a better idea of how your letter will look. I'm just going to move this up slightly to align with that box there. Again you can align these two up, just select them both holding down your command or control key and then go to align to top and then they will align at the top there. Perfect. So now if I say this is a PDF go to file, save as, go down to this file format and go down to PDF then just name it what you want I'll just leave it at doc3 and I'm going to put it onto my desktop and just select export. Now if I open this as a PDF, you can see now how it works as a PDF. Equally, 
If I then select a new page, I'm just going to insert a break. It will come out before this page, so if I just select the page break, you can see how it will transfer over every page. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.